in today's show, a look at life in quarantine. This is the ballroom that um, we've turned into our gym, so um, all the gym equipment came up from Adelaide. Keys chats about his second chance, and we hear from Ruckman Rob. Hi everyone and welcome to the Optus Crow Show, I'm Alana Smith. Well it's been a week since the Crows arrived on the Gold Coast to continue their season in the AFL's quarantine hub. We've been granted exclusive access inside the club's new training base and today we're giving you a glimpse of their new home away from home. Welcome to the McEwa Gold Coast Resort. Um, obviously we're, we're located in our hub um, with the Port Adelaide boys and where we're going to spend the next couple of weeks. So come in and I'll show you around. We're in the foyer here, so uh, Port Adelaide uh, that way. We go upstairs that way and there's a coffee area here that we share and um, so try and get a latte in before the Port boys rock up. This is the 24-7 um, snack bar, which obviously Squiggle's tucking in here, so he's here all day, he's not able to leave until he puts on five kilos, so what, what are you having, Squiggles? Uh, just double cheese toasty. Cheese toasty, yeah, so get some fat on him and beef him up, and plenty of games as well, so pinball machine, table tennis, uh, Daytona and ice hockey as well, so keep us entertained on the day off. We've got our buffet area here, so we've got breakfast, lunch and dinner prepared for us and obviously line up and keep it COVID safe for plenty of distance and then we come into the dining room and as you can see, there are a lot of separate tables again. We've got the pool facility behind us, which sort of separates us from port, so they're on this side of the hotel, we're on the other side and um, obviously crucial for our recovery and, and ice bus down there as well, so we're sharing that with the poor boys at the moment. My room overlooks the green here, get to watch a few guys come around and putt and um, a lot of the guys here love to play golf so um, on our day off we'll spend plenty of time out here in the course. Yeah, so these are our rooms uh, behind us here. We've all got our own room, um, obviously following the COVID restrictions we can't um, room with anyone else so probably a good thing because you wouldn't want to room with a guy like Riley O'Brien, a big smelly guy that snores. This is the ballroom that um, we've turned into our gym, so um, all the gym equipment came up from Adelaide. We've got certain machines that we needed to use um, to get our programs done, so we've got all that um, full access up here 24-7. Hopefully that's given you an insight into what our home up here at the Gold Coast looks like. While a short stay on the Gold Coast might be a novelty for some, one player certainly won't have any difficulty adjusting to the new climate. After being drafted to the Crows last year, Ben Keyes moved from Queensland to Adelaide in the hope of resurrecting his AFL career. But he's almost spent more time up north than he has at Westlakes, choosing to return home during the shutdown period. Now, after another brief stint in SA, Keyes is back in the Sunshine State and he's hoping to play more footy on familiar turf. He's to give them a chance to get another and he drives it long and he has the limit on cue coming from Brisbane down Adelaide and then having to go back to Brisbane for the shutdown um, and then back to Adelaide and then back to the Gold Coast on the hub. So it's been a bit um, bit, a bit funny in that respect, but it's um, it's great to be back um, up in Queensland. Um, my family's up here though, I would have come to the game against the Gold Coast and see that. So um, they, they finally got to see me play for Adelaide uh, in real life. Crows have further boosted their forward line potency, grabbing ex-line Ben Keys and ex-pie Ben Crocker in the rookie draft. I only spoke to, to two clubs, one of them being Adelaide, but um, my chat with um, with Adelaide, with Reedy, and um, it was quite quite a while sort of before the draft and then didn't hear from him after that. So um, I, I wasn't actually that confident, but that just made it a better surprise, I guess, that I actually did get picked up by the Crows. So it was definitely an um, interesting time in my life, a bit nervy, um, starting to think of what my life looked like outside of football, which is always good. So I'm grateful I had that little period to, um, to think about that, but even more grateful to get called out by the Crows. Um, that was yeah, one of the best days of my life, really. It was uh, fantastic. The AFL has moved to immediately suspend the 2020 Toyota AFL Premiership season. It was a little bit deflating for me um, with the stoppage. Um, I was really uh, quite really enjoying Adelaide and um, I felt like I was really getting to know the boys and yeah, I was um, playing some good footy and then unfortunately the shutdown, we, um, we had a lot to head home. But um, since I've, I've come back, it's um, pretty much picked up where I left off in terms of um, getting to know all the boys and, and um, I feel really close with, with pretty much with, with a lot of them now and especially um, being up here in the hub just gives us another opportunity to get closer. So yeah, it was disruptive, but it hasn't, um, hasn't sort of, uh, hasn't knocked me back too much yet. I'm proud of what you've done because you've, uh, these guys as well are the ones you're putting in. Huh? 
I've been working quite a bit on my midfield craft. My career so far, I've sort of been thrown around everywhere. I've played a lot of forward, um, spent a lot of time on the wing. Um, last year in particular, I played pretty much as a full-time forward, which is a bit different for me. Um, so as a junior, I was a midfielder. So being able to get back to that um, and do that at an AFL level is something I'm really trying to get better at. Um, and there's a lot of components to that stuff, little things that you know go unnoticed probably to the naked eye, like body work and position at stoppages, um, even clean hands around stoppages, stuff like that. That's um, quite little is actually big in the grand scheme of, of the midfield so that stuff I'm really trying to nail down um, to try and better my game. Pleasure to come on the show and after the break we catch up with Crows Ruckman Riley O'Brien. He's a highly intelligent guy and, he, and he's worked out pretty quickly that in order to be successful in this industry he's going to have to work hard and, he, and he's done that. back on Mark Pickley. The Crows have played some memorable matches at the Gabba, but there's one in particular that fans have tried to forget. In 2004, Adelaide suffered a huge 141 point loss against Brisbane, marking a turbulent start to Neil Craig's coaching career. Despite the devastating loss, the Crows claimed the minor premiership the following season, and Craigie went on to become the longest serving coach in the club's history. Thanks to Toyota, let's take a look back at the defeat that sparked Adelaide's resurgence. Yeah, things weren't going very well and uh, the decision was made not to renew Gary's contract for five and six so Gary thought it was best for him to stand down. Craigie, we asked Craigie to fill the breach and Neil took that challenge on but by golly it was, um, it was a pretty rough time. The honeymoon is well and truly over for Craig's Crows. Fans had been forgiving but some reacted savagely to last night's record breaking loss and put their disgust in writing spray painting the words pathetic and disgraceful on the club office at Amy Stadium. We played a game up in Brisbane and we absolutely got flogged. I mean it was 20, 22, 3 goals we got beaten by. And I remember Neil afterwards, he's a little bit like a you know, deer in the headlights. Uh, he just he wondered what the hell he struck. It's not the issue of whether I will be the, the long term coach of this footy club. That's, that's not the issue. There's bigger, there are bigger issues than that. Neil was there, he knew the players. I mean, it ended up, we had a bad year towards the end, but his actual coaching record was pretty good. Um, and we knew he had that ability. We felt that was a, probably the easiest way to go. Uh, and for five weeks, and, and it also gave us a chance to have a look at Neil. Saw him in that Brisbane game, and saw how bad it was, and then saw how he, he reacted with the players, and how he bonded them, and put them back together for the rest of that year and then leading on into the next year. For the Board of Directors of the Adelaide Football Club, I'm delighted to announce and confirm the appointment of Neil Craig as coach of our club for the next three seasons. We interviewed um, a couple of guys, he, but I think what we saw in Neil in that five weeks, we had a plan and Neil had a plan how he wanted to, get to go about it. So we all pulled together and stuck tight. <laughs> They're in a similar, although I think in a little bit worse position because of the transition. You know, we know that there's some players who've left the club, there's some young kids there, they're going to come through. Um, so it's a, it's a tough, tough year. But that the same principles will apply. Belief in what you're doing, hard work behind with what you're doing, and everybody being on the same page. And that means supporters, that means everybody in the club saying, well, We've got a problem, we know we've got to fix it, we know we can fix it, but let's make sure we all do it. Make sure you stay up to date with all the latest Crows news at afc.com.au. Connect with the club via their social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And if you're hungry for more footy stories, make sure you're following at The Crows Show on Twitter. Following the departure of Sam Jacobs last year, Riley O'Brien is enjoying his first full season as the Crows' number one ruckman. 
It's a well-deserved achievement for the 24-year-old who spent three years refining his craft in the sandful before cementing his spot in the senior side. We caught up with the man affectionately known as Rob. Pumps it back out. Good mark taken back pedalling by O'Brien. Probably the steep learning curve since coming in last year. Obviously played a lot of sandful footy uh, for a few years and wasn't able to crack in, but it's been awesome to get more opportunity and, and be able to develop at the level. And yeah, I've loved doing that and learning along the way and getting more confident. Probably over the last three years, he's worked incredibly hard, maybe four years to be honest, um, to get himself physically ready to play AFL football. And in some respects, he was probably ready for about 18 months while Sam Jacobs was holding the, the spot. And the reality of AFL footy is generally there's one number one ruckman. So uh, when he did get his opportunity, he was he was absolutely ready to, to take it. And since then, there's been some learning in terms of coming up against AFL standard opponents and not always winning, but what he has got is a great thirst for work and therefore, if it doesn't go his way, he goes back, he reflects and he, he comes back again better the next time. So basically, his, you know, the success he's had thus far has been, you know, the foundation that has been really hard work. Doc's been awesome since I've been at the club. Uh, obviously got here what, five and a half years ago and hadn't played much ruck before I'd come to the club, so I pretty much learnt everything I know in terms of ruck craft and how I go about it in there from him. So. Yeah, he's been awesome. He's really honest with me, tells me what I need to improve, I'm really clear with his messaging, and he's been yeah, huge in my development as a ruckman. We've got some guys in slightly contrasting. So, uh, Billy's come to us from Port, he's already had five years on AFL West, he's physically developed and, and ready to go. And then at the other end of that is Kieran, so Strawny's come on board. Uh, spent last year where we had quite a number of ruckmen playing a lot of forward minutes. Uh, at the back end of last year and now all this season he's had the opportunity to more ruck minutes and he is he's a classic ruckman, he's got great awareness and in a lot of respects there's a lot of similarities with Sam Jacobs in terms of his capacity to use the ball, his smarts out on the field. Competition and training is very high, um, they've all been training really well. Competition between all the boys is really high and obviously spots aren't taken for granted so I've got to continue to work and own my spot. It's, it's been awesome to push each other along at training. That's probably the next step to be able to help younger guys come on and and uh, develop and, and push for AFL selection. Overall, it's a pretty simple story. He's a highly intelligent guy and he's worked out pretty quickly that in order to be successful in this industry, he's gonna to have to work hard and he's done that. Coming up, we check in with injured crow, Wayne Miller. before the Crows were awarded their AFL licence, Woodville defender Richard Champion was drafted to the Brisbane Bears. The South Aussie ended up playing 183 games for the Queensland side and it's no doubt he would have been very handy in Adelaide's inaugural team. We caught up with Champion a few years ago and today we're revisiting the story thanks to Bendigo Bank. Representing the Australian Football League, it's Richard Champion. Just one of those opportunities that comes up that you just don't knock back. Now Richard plays full back for the Brisbane Bears. Richard has said full back, not full back. No points. Those reality TV shows, those fun things that you don't get asked twice to do, um, you do it. You know, you can't take life too seriously. Through he goes, there's full point for Richard Champion of the AFL. Yeah, the rat was on it with us. Um, we come second, we should have won. Probably my fault. The highlights for me, which you don't see much these days, is the opportunity to play on your big full forwards. If you look back through the 90s in particular, every team had a gun full forward uh, and were capable of kicking a hundred goal. You know, I, I unfortunately just finished before the Premiership years come along. I, I retired one year too early, um, but you know, in hindsight, you know, could have I gone on for another year? Possibly, but you just don't know, do you? I think I've been up here more than half my life, so that clarifies me or qualifies me to be a Queenslander now. Um, yeah, I've made this home since I finished up 19 years ago. 
Um, it's gone really quick, but uh, yeah, it's a wonderful place to live and uh, a nice place to raise a family. Well, the Crows have spent their first week away from family and friends while based in the Queensland hub. Thanks to Flight Centre, let's fly around social media to see what the players have been sharing with their followers. Wayne Miller eh, was forced to watch his sides clash against the Suns from his Adelaide home and faces at least two months on the sidelines. We caught up with the promising young leader who's now on the road to recovery. Come main session, trained the, the whole thing. It wasn't, wasn't bad at all. And then I just had one incident late in training where I sort of took a sharp turn on the on that foot and then it just was like a yeah, pretty sharp pain. and. Um, managed, I've managed to finish the session off, but uh, just thought I'd check in with Doc and um, they got a picture taken of it and um, yeah, it turned out he rang me that night and said that I needed to get surgery and I'd be out for close to eight weeks, so it um, wasn't the best news, but yeah, I was a little bit rattled. Um, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a weird one because I didn't think anything of it. Obviously, just get this foot right and um, I think I'm still in the moon boot for a couple of more weeks, so um, just get some upper body done and, and get alongside the boys. Um, hopefully, I'm able to, to go to the games and um, hopefully try and get involved somehow um, there and just stay involved because rehab can be sort of a lonely place, so um, it's good just to stay involved with the, with the boys and I bet guess any way I can help, I'll, I'll be there. The Crows with it back again. Miller is having some sort of first quarter. He pops through another. Can work on other things while I'm while I'm out, and I guess try and build leadership or um, build my body strength. And I got in yesterday, and I thought the mood wasn't any different. Like it was still pretty upbeat, and the and the boys are still trying to stay positive and um, just learn from some stuff that that we that we um, have got wrong. So um, yeah, it still seems pretty upbeat down uh, here. Coming up. Nixie answers a question from a fan. few Crows fans who were lucky enough to score a seat at Metricon Stadium last weekend. Thanks to Optus, we scrolled through social media to see what these supporters shared during the game. The Sunshine State produced perfect weather for Adelaide's Round 3 clash. Fans were grateful for the opportunity to see their side in action on the Gold Coast. and some enjoyed the taste of their first footy pie. Each week on the Optus Crows Show, senior coach Matthew Nix answers a question from a fan thanks to Thomas Farms. This week, Liam wants to know how Nixie is planning to get the Crows back into the top eight. Uh, thanks, yeah, Diamond. Let's hope we're Diamond sooner than later. Um, it's been, a, it's been a tough start, um, but we're in it for that medium, longer term view. Um, you know, we are disappointed with the way we're performing at this point, but I've no doubt if our boys stick to the process and um, you know, we start to play as a team, we'll get things back on track. Obviously our midfield is, is an area at the moment that we're letting ourselves down in and it's um, you know, our, our ability to, to have intensity in the contest. I'm sure we'll get that um, over the next few weeks, um, but stick with us, um, we'll back the boys in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to keep up to date with all the latest Crows news on afc.com.au and follow the club on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We're back next Sunday at 3pm on 7. Until then, bye for now.